Friends, it is finally 2023, and Winnipeg starts off the year with a nice win, wrapping up New Year's Eve and into uh, New Year's Day for some time zones, a big victory over the Edmonton Oilers 2-1. to Connor Hellebuck had to stand on his head, but, you know, sometimes when things are as dire as Winnipeg's roster situation is, you just have to lean on the one or two stars to really carry you through. We'll walk through this game and some interesting contributions from the lineup on tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets. Your Locked On the Hockey Jets, your daily podcast on the Winnipeg Jets. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey friends and welcome to tonight's episode of Locked On, Winnipeg Jets, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your host, Harrison Lee, an avid Winnipeg Jets fan and an online blogger. You can follow me on Twitter at HLivingLoco and at LO underscore Winnipeg Jets. As always, thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. If you like what you're hearing, be sure to like, follow, and subscribe on your favorite podcasting platform of choice, including Apple, Spotify, Google, Megaphone, Odyssey, and YouTube. Doing so is 100% free of charge and ensures you never miss another episode. But most of all, I just really love and appreciate your support. Now, on tonight's episode, like I said, uh, we're going to be walking through Winnipeg's New Year's Eve slash New Year's Day victory uh, over the Edmonton Oilers. Obviously, a very big game for the Jets uh, in light of you know the roster situation maybe not being so great due to injuries and illness. Sounds like there's also a stomach bug going around, so that's not great. Uh, obviously, the team is kind of limping along, but, you know, after a three-game losing streak, they ended up snapping it with a big win over the Canucks, and here on the road against the Oilers, I I think we all kind of expected a loss, right? Look, the Oilers definitely have defensive issues. Their goaltending isn't great, but the problem for the Jets is that sometimes it doesn't really matter. If you lose your line matchups against, say, Connor McDavid and some of that other really elite scoring talent, it can be really hard to dig yourself out of the hole. Now, before this game, the Jets did get one major break. Just as the Jets are missing a lot of stars, Edmonton ended up having to bench Dreisaitl due to uh, maybe an illness or an injury of some sort. Not entirely sure what happened to keep him sidelined, but, uh, you know, you never really really want to be happy about uh, injuries or illnesses for players, but I think in Winnipeg's case, uh, you might say that they were probably somewhat relieved. Uh, You know, slightly easier competition to deal with. You know, Dry Settles, obviously one of the true superstars of the NHL on a team that has obviously the number one superstar in the whole league. And so it, it says a lot that um, Dry Settles absence had such a profound impact on this game. Now, I, I say that, but on the other hand, let's not mince words. The Jets kind of got their teeth kicked in. Uh, Edmonton basically dominated from the first puck drop all the way through to the very end. It was actually something of a miracle that the Jets even came out with a victory. But, you know, sometimes Connor Hellebuck just has that ability to really dominate in ways that, you know, the the goal scorers on the opposing team can't figure out how to solve. And it wasn't for lack of trying. Uh, Edmonton sort of doubled up the Jets on shots on goal and I believe doubled or even maybe tripled them in expected goals for. It was kind of a slaughter, but, you know, the Jets held tough. Uh, The one thing I will say about this performance is that despite, you know, Winnipeg obviously really struggling in this game, it wasn't the, the lack of effort or spirit. Uh, this team very much fought for, you know, tooth and nail all the way through. And I, I did kind of hope that we would see better offensive performances from like the top six. But in light of that not necessarily being the case, you know, some other really important um, players stepped up, to, stepped up to make, you know, shot blocks, try and shut down uh, the power play when they could. Uh, guys were basically laying their bodies on the line constantly, uh, taking slap shots to the face in Heinle's case. Uh, lots of pucks, you know, fired into body parts. Everyone sort of sprawling around, desperately trying to give Hellebuck support. And Helly did his usual Vezina impression in that to keep the Jets in this. And thanks to a couple of really fortunate goals, uh, one from Mark Shifley and one from Neil Pionk, Winnipeg ended up coming out of this uh, two to one victors. You know, I, I really could have seen this game going uh, very much Edmonton's direction. I I felt like the Oilers probably could have scored five goals, and I don't think anyone 
really could have been too upset with that scoreline. It would have been it would have been a, a pretty reflective um, outcome of what we saw on the ice. But sometimes, you know, there's just this Achilles heel for for Edmonton in Winnipeg, and that happens to be Neil Pionk for some reason. Uh, he had a hand in both goals. The first was a great scoring go, uh, opportunity for him, thanks to a beautiful Kyle Connor cross lot pass on the power play, and Pionk found himself alone, squeezed it through Jack Campbell, made it one nothing, and put the onus back on the Oilers to try and come back in this one. And then the second Jets goal was a, a nice shot from the point that Kyle Connor definitely tipped uh, a beautiful deflection to make it 2-1 and give the Jets the game-winning goal that they would not relinquish. Now, there were some moments where things got a little bit hairy. The last two minutes or so, uh, obviously we recall um, Brendan Dillon taking a double minor due, due to a high sticking, so that was a little bit scary. Edmondson also pulled the goalie, of course, so it was like six on four for a little bit. And those last two and a half minutes, there was a flurry of activity Jets were sprawling everywhere. Oilers were firing shots from all angles. And somehow, you know, despite some glorious scoring opportunities, um, you know, the Jets managed to prevail in this one and hang on to both points. And really, this had to be a win for the Jets because uh, the Flames and the Lightning are going to be really tough to beat. Uh, it's not like the Canucks and uh, the Oilers don't post their own challenges. But in terms of like defensive structure, goaltending and all that, these were probably the most winnable games on the schedule for the next couple of matches. So, Really big win, a massive road victory. Really can't overstate it. Um, also, kind of uh, given some some kind thoughts to Clint Costin from the Oilers, who you know got tied up with Gustafson at the end of the game. He went down pretty awkwardly and and looked like he might have injured his lower body, maybe tore something. So hoping that uh, his injury doesn't keep him sidelined for too long. Just a really unfortunate circumstance, but uh, unfortunately something that does happen quite often in hockey. It is what it is, but. You know, everyone from the Jets was going in to check on him and stuff. So uh, big ups to the boys for for keeping um, composure and making sure that, you know, their opponents were doing well in what was a pretty hard fought and occasionally pretty chippy game. Uh, this definitely was one of those games where sometimes you just don't care about the process. You just want both points. And in that respect, Winnipeg uh, managed to get both. In a little bit, I'll kind of break down a couple of more performances that I think are worth spotlighting. You know, for for one reason or another, maybe positively or maybe not so positively. But before we go any further, I did want to shout out our friends and partners at Athletic Greens. Our next partner has a product that I use literally every day. I started taking AG1 because I was looking for a, a boost to my daily immune system and routine. A lot of you are probably thinking about you know the, the fall and winter seasons, flu is running around, COVID's running around, and you need to arm your nutritional uh, balance with all of the help it can get. And that's why AG1 is a product that I highly recommend. If you're wondering what AG1 is, it's a great product that gives you uh, 75 high quality vitamins, minerals, and whole food source superfoods, plus probiotics and adaptogens to help you start your daily routines. It also helps to arm your immune system with plenty of great vitamins and minerals that uh, you know strengthen your response to all sorts of nasty bacteria and viruses. And best of all, this stuff is really affordable. It costs less than $3 a day. It tastes great. And it has no GMOs or nasty chemicals, no additives, uh, and only contains one gram of sugar or less. And it's, you know, keto friendly, paleo friendly, great for vegans, uh, you know, contains no dairy and is gluten free. So no matter what your dietary restriction is, they've got you covered. And with over 7,000 five star reviews, you really can't go wrong. This is a great product and Athletic Greens wants to make sure that you have the uh, nutritional insurance that you need heading through all of your daily routines and trials. Right now, it's time to reclaim your health and arm your immune system with convenient daily nutrition. It's just one scoop and a cup of water every single day. That's it. No need for a million different pills and supplements to look out for your health. To make it easy, Athletic Greens is going to give you a free one-year supply of immune-supporting vitamin D and fry-free travel packs with, with your first purchase. All you have to do is visit athleticgreens.com slash NHL network. Again, that is athleticgreens.com slash NHL network to take ownership over your health and pick up the ultimate daily nutritional insurance. Hello, friends, and welcome back to this episode of Locked On Winnipeg Jets. Thanks for making Locked On Jets your first listen of the day every day. We're just uh, wrapping up some thoughts from... Winnipeg versus the Oilers, a very big game, a massive win for the Jets, and a couple of performances from some players I thought were really worth spotlighting. 
Before we go any further, though, just wanted to recommend that you make your second listen of the day, Locked On NHL Prospects. It's your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the NHL draft, plus NHL draft rankings and top prospect comparisons for every single team. Locked On NHL Prospects is available on all the all of the same platforms that we are and YouTube. And as always, it is free to subscribe. So do so right now. It is a great show, and I recommend, uh, especially for those of you who want to hear more about Brad Lambert and Chaz Lucius and some Jets prospects, a great opportunity to, j- to jump in and also get ready for the upcoming draft, which maybe Winnipeg will walk away with a really cool prospect. Now, focusing back on the current Jets, obviously Winnipeg had, uh, you know, maybe not the best game against the Oilers. Let's be honest, we kind of got paddled and it wasn't exactly pretty, but sometimes, you know, that thing that people always talk about, grit, right? And and the determination to come out with a win. I would say that that probably embodies the best way to describe this game. I think the Jets really laid down, you know, laid down their bodies and huh, in a in a hockey sense, their lives for this this victory. It definitely came at a physical toll on the team, constantly blocking shots and, and expending energy. It's tough. And trying to skate against this Oilers team that has as much rapid fire countering talent plus McDavid on top of that, you know, it, it's actually surprisingly difficult. The only hope that you have with the Oilers is that you can try and pressure their defense and goaltending into making mistakes, which uh, unfortunately Winnipeg wasn't really able to do like I was, you know, hoping that they would. Um, but otherwise, you know, I, I think there were some players who I thought really impressed me. Christian Reichel, who I've mentioned as a potential call-up option, he actually did get summoned right after the roster freeze lifted. And, you know, he had a a pretty pivotal assist on one of Winnipeg's goals. And uh, in general, I just think that he's been a nice complimentary winger. Uh, He got the bump up to uh, Pierre-Luc Dubois' line, which I think is the sensible option. It's probably what I would have done. Uh, Sam Gagne, you know, he's definitely slowing down a little bit. Might be, you know, some fatigue setting in. He might also not be feeling well. But it is true that Gagne is like 33 years old. And, you know, just like Wheeler, your, your body, as you're getting into your 30s, it is a little bit hard to keep up, especially if you're getting like top six minutes. So it might be time for some of the kids and younger players to try and uh, at least carry the weight and do some load management. It's really hard when you need goals and offensive contributions. And the truth is, is that Gagne probably has uh, one of the best tips uh, for, for deflections and a a great sense of spatial awareness and offensive instincts on the team. So, you know, you have to figure out how much you can allow him to rest and recover while also ensuring that, you know, with uh, the current injury crisis and stuff that you're not overextending uh, the rest of the team, it's tough. It's a tough balance, but I think Bones has done about as much as he possibly can so far, and it's hard to necessarily argue with the results. I think the Jets surviving up until this point is pretty amazing. Reichel, I thought, had a nice night. I think he'll be a guy that I wouldn't, I wouldn't mind keeping around longer term. Last year, I thought he looked impressive before his injuries and stuff. Um, he, he's just a really nice middle six winger. He's got that skill and, and forechecking and hard work ethic, all of which the Jets could definitely use right now. And he can seemingly keep up with some higher skill uh, attackers. So I think that's a positive sign. The Jets could definitely use some of that while, you know, Manaline and Perfetti Uh, Wheeler and of course Ehlers are all still on the mend no real update on the timelines for that other than what we know already but you know so far the the Jets are really hanging on and I think that's probably what they're going to have to do for the next few weeks as the rest of the team slowly heals up now I would like to see a trade or two but I I think that is probably uh, I wouldn't say a distant prospect but something that I'm not really banking a lot on yet um, the front office hasn't been linked to any teams as far as I know other than uh, the teams that are currently scouting the Jets but you know Winnipeg has had a way of surprising us before they've had a couple of deals that basically materialized out of seemingly nowhere even though they were in the works for a while so I I wouldn't be surprised if Chevy's got something in store for the Jets uh, I think they could definitely use a forward and and certainly, uh, well, probably more than one at this point. I mean, the Jets' top six and even their middle six is looking pretty barren in terms of like high-end goal-scoring talent. So some more offense would be nice. The Jets have a, a congested schedule. And while some of the opponents that they'll be facing over the next month or two are going to be on the softer side, it doesn't really matter if your team is, is unfortunately at the roster uh, strength that it is right now for the Jets. Winnipeg is pretty weak, and that means... Uh, that they're just going to have to really lean on Hellebuck, who had a stupendous night in net and and really carried the Jets through some pretty bad performances. 
other than that, I mean, you know, Pionk had his usual offensive uh, highlights, but, um, you know, unfortunate defensive lapses. I will say that I thought Billy Heinella played a, a strong game, even though, you know, you might look at the expected goals and, and um, shot differentials for not only Heinella, but for most of the team, and it'll look pretty poor. But in terms of like zone transitions and defensive zone exits and stuff, Heinella and Dylan were doing really well together with that. Dylan, especially, I thought had a really strong night. Uh, if he hadn't taken that double minor at the end of the game, it probably would have been as close to a perfect night for him, given the circumstances, as you could ask for. But, you know, it is what it is. Uh, the Jets still came out with a victory, so I, I guess I can't really complain too much. Uh, let's just hope that he doesn't high stick somebody like that in the future when the game is on the line. Now, uh, in just a little bit, I do kind of want to kick off 2023 with some brief New Year's resolutions for the Jets, things that I would like to see them, see them do, and, and maybe uh, some wishes for the future. And at the end, I'll put out a call for you to give me your New Year's resolutions for the Jets and see what y'all are feeling about this upcoming 2023 for Winnipeg. Hello, friends, and welcome back to these closing thoughts on tonight's episode of Locked On Jets. We are just wrapping up really quickly with some final thoughts on, uh, you know, upcoming New Year's resolutions for the Jets, things we'd like to see, things uh, we're hoping for, and maybe some expectations for a franchise that is is definitely on the way up, but still has some room for growth, to put it lightly. My first New Year's resolution is I think I would really like the Jets to be aggressively exploring the trade market. They may already be doing so. We just haven't heard about it yet. Uh, and I think that's a really important thing for Jets fans to be aware of, especially with the injury crisis, because we all know Winnipeg doesn't really make um, a ton of deals traditionally. It's only when Winnipeg feels it's kind of backed into a corner and really has no choice. I think this is probably one of those times, but the front office may not agree because they're trying to accrue cap space. They're trying to get ahead of the trade deadline and they don't want to overcommit early in 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 fears of either tying up cap space and maybe not getting as much benefit from their trade acquisitions once everyone gets healthy. But from my perspective, I don't know how much of that is really a big deal. I think there are ways to kind of work around some of these issues, and I think the Jets should probably be thinking about that because the team as it is 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 really starting to be a little bit overextended. And while you might say, well, they're they're making it through right now, all of these extra minutes and things that they're logging and, and the amount of stress and uh, some of the, the illnesses that they're dealing with, all of that will kind of reflect with the team later in the season and probably into the playoffs. So keeping this team rested and healthy as much as possible is really crucial, especially with how many setbacks they've had over the past couple of, a couple of weeks. Um, my second year's resolution is I, I would like to see um, Heinle, I think, play a more prominent role. So far, I think he's had a really impressive start with the the Jets recently, and I think, you know, given what his skill sets are and what he can do for this team, I really don't know that you can bench him. Uh, th there might be some games where he really struggles, and yeah, he could use like a rest or something, but for the most part, unless he's really playing poorly, I think the skill sets that he brings in his puck-moving ability, plus his increasingly uh, uh, sharp defensive instincts, I think all of that would make him a candidate for somebody that who really needs to be getting top four minutes and can probably help this Jets defense, whether the loss of Schmidt and some of the issues that, you know, Pionk has been dealing with recently. My third and final uh, New Year's resolution is I, I want to see, you know, some of the Jets prospect forwards at some point this season, not now, uh, but when Lambert and Lucius have had some time to grow with the Moose, I think towards the end of the year, I, I would like to see them in maybe even by the trade deadline, kind of get a sense of where they are, see if they can maybe carve out some kind of a role at the NHL level. I think Lambert is much further off. Uh, he's still very chaotic, and I think his decision-making is probably not NHL caliber yet, but Lucius might be a little bit closer, hard to say, um, but certainly it wouldn't be bad to get an audition for each of them. See if they can boost the Jets, uh, you know, middle six or bottom six with some clear high-end skill. It's not like you, you really stand to lose that much with this, uh, and it, it might help the Jets kind of better focus on what their trade acquisitions should look like and what sort of deals they might, they might be able to work out ahead of the March trade deadline. But, you know, these are just the uh, broad things that I've probably talked about before still on my list of things that I hope for. And hopefully, you know, 2023 continues to bring more jets victories and all that. And maybe even some Jack Adams consideration for good old bones. 
Now, let me know your New Year's resolutions for the Jets in the comments below. Maybe I'll talk about them on a future episode, but for tonight's episode, that is going to be all the time that we have this evening. Thank you so much for making Locked On Jets your first listen today. For your second listen, check out Locked On NHL Prospects. It's your daily podcast covering the next generation of hockey superstars leading up to the NHL draft. Locked On Prospects is available on all of your favorite podcasting platforms, including YouTube, so be sure to like, follow, and subscribe right now for free. And as always, thanks again for listening. Have a great night, and go Jets go!